Hey guys, what's up? So, take a look. What's on my workbench here? So, pretty stoked. It's not for me, it's actually a computer or a 3D printer I'm fixing. Um, it's a, well, it's the first time I've actually messed with the Bamboo Labs Carbon X1. Um, so one of the things that's cool about when you're fixing a lot of 3D printers is that I get to see a lot of different 3D printers. I get to see how they're built, how they operate, the mechanics, you know, how they work, uh, what other companies have tried. So it actually helps me when I'm designing my 3D, 3D printers and parts. I get to see how everybody else, a lot of different people have accomplished the same things. Um, so that's interesting. I'm just looking at this thing, figuring out for the first time, and I'll tell you what's wrong with it here in a second. But cool little printer. I mean, there's a couple things I don't like about it, you know, off the bat. But um, well, I mean, I don't like the proprietary firmware. Um, so um, the guy that brought this over here, um, he actually bought this from another guy, and he really just bought it for spare parts. But then he decided you know, he wanted to get it to see if we could try to get it to work again. So he already has another Carbon X1. He really just wanted it for the AMS system, the tool changing system or the filament changer. Um, so I guess originally the guy had uh, like ripped off one of the connectors. Um, so it looks like the original source of the problem was this right here, uh, ripped off connector. Um, but then Bamboo Labs, I guess, sent him the new tool board. But the new tool board is different, so. Um, like this new tool board actually has like a like wires here, whereas the new one actually uses a ribbon cable. Um, interesting design. Like I said, remember I've messed with it, one of these X ones. Little fan board. It's true. You have an LED and fan board. Um, that's the front of it. Um, I don't know what that is. If that's a filament sensor, but I know that there's some kind of filament cutoff thing right here. But I think this is manually activated. Like there's a, like looks like some kind of knife to cut filament off. Um, but yeah, this is how it came. I mean, it's just missing the parts and a couple of the connectors or there's a pin pulled out there that I got to fix. Uh, a lot of wires that go to this LiDAR thing here. I'm guessing that's a LiDAR that thing right there. This thing right here. So I don't know if that runs on eddy current or what the, what the deal with that one is. So at the same time, I'm actually fixing this printer. I'm going to be learning a lot about how Carbon um, or Bamboo Labs operates. So I guess he didn't bring the AMS. So the AMS is different. So I'm just going to test without it. But I noticed that he didn't bring the hot end. Um, but the cool thing is this allows me to see these uh, carbon fiber rods in person. Wow, these are crazy smooth and perfect. So that's probably how they perfected this, you know. Is I know, uh, let me show my other printer. My Celerius printer, I'm using eight millimeter carbon fiber rods, but I had to do a lot of work to get these straight. Um, you know, a lot of sanding and to get the diameters correct. So they operated smoothly. Um, well, that's cool to see how another company does it, you know, with a lot of money. But yeah, these are crazy smooth. But they use the same, the oil impregnated bronze bushings, you know, the, with the graphite inserts. Um, but it looks like they're not serviceable. I don't know if you can get to buy if you, these wear out, you have to buy the whole thing. But the slop doesn't. I don't think you did a lot of prints because I heard that read that some people get slop in here, and there's a little bit of movement. I mean, it can't be totally tight because it wouldn't be able to move. If it's totally tight. Um, another interesting thing is it looks like they're using 48 millimeter motors or even less. Actually, those look well. But then look at the. Look at the pulley. The pulley is a really big pulley. It's like a 12 millimeter, millimeter pulley. I guess they do that to have so it will self-align that it can actually walk back and forth. Um, yeah, because they're using a six millimeter belt and they're using this really big pulley. So I'm guessing that's how they keep it uh, aligned from walking. So since they do it that way, that might be a good, give me some ideas for my own printers, the Orca printer, which is a Core XY. Um, so yeah, it looks about, let me get my measuring tape. We'll see how big it is. Yeah, so it's about 48 millimeters. I'm kind of a, oh, that's just the mount. I was like, well, that's a wild looking, Nemo 17. All right, so 48 millimeters. So they're able to accomplish those speeds with 48 millimeters. Um, cable chain, tiny little cable chain. Um, I'll go through the, the how, it, how it operates, but 
I mean, this is very similar from what I'm saying is the tool headboard is a, uh, you know, basically it's its own MCU, has its own ARM processor. Um, it just distributes uh, components out. So I noticed that, I don't know if this is actually running USB-C to communicate with Clipper or whatever Linux-based, I think they run Clipper, but uh, like a Linux-based operating system they're actually running. But it's very similar to a um, one of these right here. So like I said, I don't know I know um, if it's running CAN bus or if it's running over USB. They're using, like what I'm saying, they're using a USB cable, USB-C type cable connector. Because I've actually seen like what the, here's a Vika B1, here's what I'm trying to describe. They actually use a USB-C cable. Um, and what that does is, I mean, besides all the fans and lights and all that stuff, um, all the power to the hot end, thermistor, everything goes over this one cable. So to accomplish that, what they're probably doing, they're probably using multiple pairs in the USB cable to for the hot end, you know, because it wouldn't be enough. You would, it would get, uh, you would overheat the wires if you drew too much current over some really thin wires. Uh, Alright, so yeah, so the tool, the, the revision of the tool head is different, so I gotta figure that out. Um, but I should have everything here, except like I said he didn't give me the hot end, so I need to ask him for the hot end so I can fully test it before I get back to him. Um, so I'll do the same usual thing, I'll make sure everything looks good. Firmware updates. Um, so I'm assuming because this came directly from Bamboo Labs. They probably um, um, flash the board. Um, yeah, if it's not running over USB-C in the MCU, so I noticed there's an SWD port. Okay, strong glasses on, but if you could, probably can't see in this camera. But SWD is typically how you'd actually program the MCU or the ARM processor. So this would communicate with the flash on the processor. You could flash your operating system. So with the traditional like um, tool head, you can actually flash like this with over, over USB C over CAN bus, uh, or you can actually put this thing into bootloader mode and hook up to a computer and flash it that way. But any sort of like STM or ST32 or micros that's uh, using ST Link. To program. I've actually had to recover a lot of boards using ST Link. So I don't just program 3D printers. I do like, you know, pretty much everything now is Linux based. ARM processor, ARM processor Linux based. Well, actually, this doesn't run Linux, sorry. But SOC Linux, same thing. So, I mean, the toolhead looks like a basic uh, 3D printer toolhead. Like I said, I've seen so many different variations of 3D printers doing, I mean, pretty much they all accomplish the same thing to melt plastic. Um, so I don't know if there's like a filament detect sensor or a way to cut the filament because I know this this manual thing. So, all right. So this is a very popular printer though. These Carbon X ones. Mm, plastic isn't very thick. Pretty thin plastic. It uses lead screws. Typical lead screws. Yeah, so it doesn't use any sort of linear rails. That's really odd because I, I've said this in several of my videos that originally 3D printers started out, most of them started out with linear linear rods, right? And then everybody went to linear rails, um, and then everybody started going back to linear rods again. It's like all the new, a lot of the new printers coming out now have like linear rods instead of linear rails. All right, so as I yeah. fix this printer, I'm just going to kind of give you guys my thoughts, what I think about it. Like I said, just because I've seen so many different 3D printers. Um, so it looks like a blower fan, like a secondary part cooling blower fan. And the primary is a 5015 fan. Alright, so then I see an LED strip with the diffuser. Um, so the inside here there's probably an L LED strip. And, the, and the, the white thing is sort of, it's called a diffuser, and it makes the light more even. So you don't see a bunch of little dots. Um, I'd probably like to see more than one light. You have one light going in one direction. Um, so it would have been nice if they would add a second one on this on this rail over here to make it more even. Um, yeah, I'm I'm really curious about the operating system. If it's actually like Clipper based or if it's 100% Linux based proprietary. Where's the main board in this thing? I don't get the main board. I don't, I'm not going to open up the main board if I don't have to. That's not really. 
so it looks like they're, um, so I'm going to go through and make sure all the firmware is up to date too, because, um, you know, because I'm sure they're, but one thing, I mean, not, I don't know about this printer, but now I know most 3D printers, you don't, you typically don't want a uh, firmware mismatch, because since lots of times when they upgrade the software, you know, to have these, they, if they change the protocols, or even Canvas, it depends on what they out communicates, but you need to upgrade their firmware on all the different devices. So right now, the only place I see firmware would be the, this tool red board, and I'm sure there's the main board too, so. You know, I'd love to find the source of these carbon fiber rods. So if you guys know where you can get these things, let me know in comments below, because these things are perfect. Um, yeah, I'd like to buy some of these and put them on my other printer, the Celeritas. Um, yeah, these are so smooth. All right, so I fixed that connector right there. So the pins were pulled out, so I redid it. I'm gonna verify the pin out too, double, double check. You know, so it should be the same as this one. Um, yeah, I wish they would've used bigger, these things are hard to deal with. Um, I, I definitely prefer, I mean, they're bigger, the JST connectors, but it's so much easier, even just to re-terminate the pins, you know, to recrimp the pins. Like this thing is tiny. All right, I'll be perfectly honest here. This is probably one of the most annoying tool heads I've ever worked on. The connectors are too small. It's like this thing is not designed to be taken apart. Um, especially, I mean, it's... The issue is they had an issue with this board and they sent the boards out to a typical customer. A typical customer is not going to be able to figure this out. Like the typical end user person that buys this, this printer is not going to be able to figure this stuff out. So, I mean, I have experience with I do this all day long for a living. And... Yeah, it's even difficult for me. So, just getting all the wire fish in there, it's super tight. Getting this fit wire fish back in there and mounted down. It's definitely not an easy tool head to work on. All right, so this new um, new revision actually said it gets rid of that wire and adds that cable right there. I think you guys are aware, like these connectors can only go one way. Right, like that. So that small one goes to the front and the bigger one goes to the back or they won't lock in, you'll be sitting around. It's like they purposely made it the opposite, so just be aware. So if you're trying to push this uh, cable connector in, it won't go in, that's probably what it is. Okay, so those little locks, those keep the ribbon cables in place, and these are uh, machine threaded. All the screws so far they've dealt with have been 1.5 millimeter. So you need to make sure that was oriented down, because that actually what keeps it down. And it go, goes against a little foam pad. So I'm gonna fire this thing up here. So, yeah, I'm obviously gonna get a thermistor error. Thermistor, when I mean, the hot end's not connected, the fan, I'm sure it's gonna get warming. The firmware version of normal repairing up, see that's why I was, because I'm saying that the tool head is new, so there's a firmware mismatch. That's what I'm guessing. So, um, you know, like I said, on the MCU, there's a, I think there's a built on uh, ARM processor that needs to be flashed. So they typically need to be flashed the, uh, similar firmware so they can communicate. So when they update Linux, right, and they update that firmware there, you typically need to update the tool board too as well. All right, so yes. I'm not connected to the internet, so how is this thing working? I'm sure it's gonna give right, me an so connected again to my, well, I had to reboot it and then connect to my network first. So hopefully this will be able to go online. <clears throat> Last time I got stuck at 1% too, so. So in an abnormal state, I don't know if that means Linux is messed up or I'm suspecting the tool head, there's a, a version skew or version version mismatch. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that's locked in there. All right, still stuck at one percent. So, anyway, that's kind of interesting. So it looks like there's one motor, and so you can't control the independent access. I'm guessing, like it's not try try uh try bed leveling. You'd have a motor in each access if that was the case. But it looks like one motor controls the whole gantry, the, or I mean the Z gantry. All right, so I decided to do a factory reset, just because I don't know what's on here. So, all right, so I got uh, the firmware update, but I had to do it from the phone. For some reason, when I do it on the screen here, it wouldn't go. But when I do it here, it works. All right, so I know it's getting dark here, but it seems like I, after I got the firmware updates, I stopped getting that warning about the abnormal firmware. So I'm guessing what it, the deal was with the, the firmware is probably newer on the tool head than it was on the board. So I was getting like a version skew. Um, that's just a guess of mine. Um, 
so by updating the firmware on the main board, it basically stopped giving me the version skew. Um, could be wrong though. All right, so I know the LiDAR is working because I just did a test, but because I don't have the hot end, I can't do a full test. Um, but so far, I mean, everything's good. Like I said, the, the main board is now communicating, no error. All right, so um, I'm going to get the hot end to fully test it, but I'll give you guys my final thoughts on this thing. Um, I mean, I fixed a lot of printers, so um, I'll tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about it. Um, the carbon, carbon fiber rods are perfect. I've never seen better carbon fiber rods than this. So I don't know if it's hollow or a solid, solid thing here. But uh, the quality is incredible. Um, I mean, overall, I think it's a pretty good printer. You know, um, interesting how they do certain things. Uh, but um, since I wasn't able to do a test print, I, I mean, I, I know these things actually print very well. I mean, they're very dialed in. Um, what I don't like about it is this proprietary firmware. Um, what I was saying earlier is like um, I couldn't update the firmware from it would fail when I updated it from the screen, but when I did it from my cell phone, it actually worked. Um, um, I mean, pretty cool printing. Mean, these things are pretty pricey, and with the AMS, I think this thing's like over a thousand bucks. So, yeah, he actually does have the AMS for it. So he just didn't bring it. Um, can get those covers back on. Kind of bummed I can't fully test it, but. Um, yeah, the main thing was just to get this board going, and so I did all the tests, the resonance tests, and all our tests, except for I couldn't do a test print. So, um, um, I mean, I mean, if would I personally buy one for myself, um, probably not, just because I don't like the whole closed firmware. You know, I know you could always clipperize this and convert it, but um, yeah, I mean, it's cool. I mean, if you don't want to have to deal with firmware and just kind of let them handle everything, I mean, I like to tweak things, so it's like, it's a hobby of mine, so. Um, all right, I mean, go printer. All right. Yeah, it's our first uh, Carbon X1. First, oh, well, second Bamboo Labs one. Well, the first one I was was the A1, I guess. The, I replaced the hot end on A1. But, um, all right, cool. I mean, pretty good. All right, awesome.